We can always reload. Oh, I thought the plane said Viagra on the side. Sometimes I wish I was a baboon. I've seen your back. Your wish is slowly coming true. Ooh. Spirit of Saint Bernard. Uh -huh. well, we don't want any of that. I really like that style of game where it's like you have the 360 image that you turn around inside. Oh, of literally, it was right there. You and Josie strike out into the woods. Into the woods. <laughs> I've already done that play. <laughs> the landmarks on the map have given you enough information to get you back to the airstrip if necessary. After taking a tramp in the woods... Where's a tramp? Hey, I resent that. He's oh, she, she resented that. It's a bird. Is that a minor? No, it belongs to... <laughs> a minor bird. No, it's a wiener bird. It belongs to itself. Oh, ooh. That could be very complicated and scary. <laughs> We don't, we don't really want to be thinking about that. No. The sky, let's just look at it. The sky is largely obscured by foliage and thick clouds of flies, but what you can see is impossibly blue. It's fake, it's a simulation. It smells like a greenhouse, humid and rich with aromas of growth and decay. Hey, Scram, we don't serve minus here. Ooh, Temple Ruins. Oh, that's nice. Rocks. Jagged boulders are strewn around the area like sleep crunchies that fall from God's eyes in the morning. <laughs> Rocks, Sam. Well, that's a good one. All the useful adventure-type objects out here have been completely crushed by the last adventure game production company that came through here. <laughs> uh, who are they making fun of? Probably this Sierra. You start to climb a tree. Hey, there's animals up there. Pay attention, Stonebender. We're in the jungle. Hey, back. What animals are up there? I'm as on top of things as you are. Can we look up? No. You can look at the mist. The pendulous clouds shrouding the mountaintops make the deserted city look like mirage or an illusion. Actually, it's just like when you see puddles of water on the highway in front of you. What you're actually seeing is the reflection of another ancient deserted city a few hundred miles away. <laughs> Explore. Oh, we start to wander towards the ruins, but Josie calls you back. Hey, stick with the tour group. But if not on the itinerary, if you don't like it, complain to your travel agent. That'd be you. Sorry, see me during office hours. Oh, I forgot about the banter. <laughs> Looking for a particular thing. Ooh, a staircase. The stairs lead up to the temple entrance. Is that a waste basket at the bottom? <laughs> you have any idea who that is? No, but whoever he is, he could use a decent moisturizer. Because he's a rock. The top of an urn lies to one side. Oh, it was an urn, not a waste basket. <laughs> You reach down to pick up the urn lid. As you do, you see several long, dirty cracks in the inside of the lid. Other than risk destroying this potentially valuable relic, you straighten up again and leave it alone. But that's not adventure gamey. If it's not nailed down, it goes in our pocket. That's right. The urn's far too heavy. Even if it were emptied of... Ooh, it's got sand in it? You comb through the sand, but other than a fair amount of sticks, dust, and other non-sand... <laughs> Particulate matter, you dredge up nothing out of the ordinary. Oh my. Let's move these vines. You go up to the front of the temple and begin to pull the vines. After a moment, Josie joins you, and between the two of you, you're able to remove almost all the vegetation, revealing a bas relief in subtle but brilliant color. It's so beautiful. What looks like an entrance to the temple is completely sealed by an enormous rock. Uh oh. What are we gonna do with that? There's no knob, there's no handle, there's no keyhole. In fact, the colossal oblong stone is entirely featureless. Maybe we ought to put the urn on top. 
According to Josie, this is an image of the god... Yes, to whom the temple is dedicated. Can't wait to take a leak? You can't, yeah, probably about can't wait, to, can't wait to take a leak. Oh. You can't even begin to read, hieroglyphic. Hieroglyphic, I can't talk. This is what you get for not paying attention in your high school Aztec class. Oh, this is getting a little... It's similar to Tupi, and I'm a little rusty on my Tupi. You're not going to grade me on this, are you? Not till we get back to Callahan's anyway. This has got to be it. The people here call themselves Yora, and they worship this cacao tree. Worship chocolate? That's I mean, not I too do. surprising. <laughs> Who doesn't? Rollins used it for money at one time, and only royalty was entitled to it. Hmm. You scramble up over the ledge among the pillars. Other than a lot of decaying plant and animal life on the stone floor, you find nothing. I don't really want to, I don't want to, I need to get to where I can, like, see the, there we go. Approach the uh, Easy. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's one of those picture things. I'm not good at these. That's like such a modern take on things. Um, so which one's which color? Uh, it looks like ones are yellows. No clue. Uh, it, it literally, oh, well, that's not what. Uh. I don't know. I'm not good at these type of puzzles at all. And I'm, I don't have the concentration to sit here and read all this. That is like a lot of information. Well, is that a six? So there will be six across. Which that's not some, right. Well, no, I have like six stones somewhere across. And then the column, there'll be like so many stones across as well. <laughs> How many hints am I going to put it? Look how, look at it, it's doing it for us, because I am not doing this. Sorry, folks. Not my cup of tea. You're brilliant at this. Am I? This isn't my thing. If it's going to let me skip it, we're going to skip it. There we go. Look at that. I did it. <laughs> Once the last stone clicks into place, a long unused system of weights and counterweights goes into operation. The massive stone slides slowly into the ground, heavy thudding vibrations rocking the entire temple and making your feet itch. Yeah, I don't feel bad for not doing it either, so... <laughs> Kiss my ass. Quite sexy. You cross the threshold of the temple into another time. For the second time today. You and Josie cross the threshold into the temple. The air is cool and faintly sweet, not nearly as musty as you anticipated, probably because of the open doorway on the other side of the room. The low ceiling feels as if it's designed for people shorter than you and who like to climb stairs more than you do. <laughs> What's that hole? A pit Jack, could you get this log off me? <laughs> Maybe we can roll push, the tree out of the way. Right, sure. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. The artwork in this game is amazing. That's the way we just came. Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to go backwards. <laughs> Can't remember. Like back to there the we go. Yeah. Well, no, that didn't 
Chewy, please stop. Yes, back to. <laughs> she just wants your attention. She does. Are you gonna hit space bar? Okay, how do I go back? Why can't I go back into the jungle? I need to go back into the jungle. In the jungle, the jungle. I guess that did it. You're going to click. Click. Until you find your way. Alright. It's a monkey. Notice that monkey? Yes. He keeps following us. He's been following us for the last quarter hour. Maybe he's looking for Reese's pieces. <laughs> oh, or Reese's chip monkey. cookies. Uh -huh. Or a lemon orangutan pot. Well, that's not scary in the way. I've come all the way to Brazil. I don't want to do San Simeon too. Spank the monkey. <laughs> Your cat doesn't know how to say it. it like, doesn't know what she certainly doesn't. He's like, I'm gonna stand in front of the screen. In and front she, of the mouse, in front of the keyboard, and until you pay me the attention I deserve. In front of the TV. I, I literally could not do anything at the moment. <laughs> there is a cat in the way. He's like, pay me attention. <laughs> She's a sweet kid. I bet. Okay. That's what I was looking for. There's a parachute hung on the branches above. The ground directly below shows evidence of being recently disturbed. You climb up the host tree and are able to snag one of the parachute cords. You tug on it many times, showering leaves, branches, spiders, insects, lizards, and other small animals onto Josie. <laughs> Eventually, you're able to bring the pack all the way over the, to the tree. You shimmy down, back down the tree and admire your handiwork. So I... These aren't the important trees, these are the extras. They get $50 a day for standing around, adding to the atmosphere. The real trees get union wage. Now these trees would just be digitally inserted. I'm spanking the monkey. This displeases the monkey greatly, but leaves you strangely satisfied. <laughs> the flora is a pandemonium of colors, startling and bright, and found nowhere else in the world except perhaps Paul Dan. <laughs> So did we get it? I don't see it in our pack. I don't either. I don't even like see a backpack at all in our like it's all stuff we brought with us. This is nice and slow. Is yeah, the backpack we still on the tree? Oh, sure is. You've reeled in Guzman's abandon. Oh, it's the guy we kicked out. Oh, it's right there still. What's tech? There we go. I couldn't even see it in there anymore. It like, it, yeah, it was there. blending in. I was like, I need to get the walkie-talkie. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes it pays to be an animal, sometimes don't. Like a monkey? Because you get to spank that animal all day long. Nah. You suck a little of the sap out of the end of the stalk. It's intensely sweet and has an indescribable flavor. And you die of dysentery. Yay! Yeah. There's our bird. <laughs> Although, I'm not sure how to. 
once again how to exit from here. Can you just use the map? Well, that took me back. Good question. Nope. You had ornamental food just la <laughs> ornamental food just last night. It's a little hard to. Yeah, the navigation system is a little. There we go. Weird. I mean, it's fine. Like I don't. It's fun, and I love the graphics and everything. And there's a lot of great little. I hope we didn't need those. I don't think so. We'll find out. <laughs> you screwed up, so you can't finish the game. <laughs> right, well... Oh, see, look at the Jeep. Look on the back. It, it's got a C5 on the back. We're going to the Jeep laughs tonight. There's some serial number on the back of the Jeep. Da, 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 ba, 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 da, da, ba. Uh, I can't see anything. Oh, C five. The man who answers your squawk is chewing something as he speaks. You can't understand him. This is Alani. Get over here. I think there's something wrong with this whiskey. You're shocked to hear the man say, "Okay." <laughs> Let's take the Jeep. Well, no, there's... You carefully extract precisely one tire iron and one Jeep jack from the back of the Jeep. Talk to the Jeep. Are you a Jeep or a sport <laughs> utility vehicle? Great Caesar's ghost. I'm a sport utility vehicle. And <laughs> don't call me Jeep. Uh, 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 it, it, I didn't know this was the Transformers. Talk is Jeep. Huh? <laughs> okay. Well, we have our way to get the tree out of the way back where we were. Oh, oh, okay. Just ignore us. <laughs> we're not here. We're going in here. And here. And no, no, no. It's probably been three months since we played, but we played like the second, <laughs> the first two episodes. So that's one of the reasons I was like, I saw that puzzle, and I was just like, no, happen. not gonna not, do it. Not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent. Wouldn't be prudent. Read my lips. We're not doing that puzzle. We're not doing the puzzle. Fuck that puzzle. <laughs> Thousand points of life. <laughs> Screw all of y'all. I want to use the fucking jack on the tree. Lift! And back, Lois. I'll just... Oh, Clark, the rough, tough, cream puff like you. Who do you think you are, Who Superman? do you think you are? No, I want to I wanna use... I want... I want... I want... I want... I... Eh? Eh? You have to use the tire iron first? No. Oh, all that... You have to put the tire iron on the jack first? I just can look at it. How are you supposed to iron a tire with this? It's a tire iron, you big lug. Because I know in some games you have to connect things before you can use them. You have to use the tire iron on the jack, but you're supposed to right. use the jack first. Like, if I lift, it's... Yeah, he just tries to... There we go. Oh, I figured it out. What? Well, That's you, a different text box. You, you slip the flat end of the tire iron into the slot and bear down. At first, it seems like the jack will give way. The tire iron itself looks like it's bending. Within a few strokes, the gnarled tree begins to rise. Dirt and leaves patter to the stone floor. The jack's hold on the tree seems tentative at best. You stop pumping just before... <laughs> pumping just before the jack <laughs> reaches its height limit giving you just enough berth to slip underneath Josie looks with trepidation at the tree you plant a foot on it and lean your weight into it figuring that if the tree stays up fine if the tree falls over it will have rolled back enough to permit you to squeeze out the top okay with our pumping <laughs> but the jack has bitten into the wood and seems solidly in place 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks precarious. We, we, we did it. We solved the puzzle. We did. Mine. What'd you take? I took the branches. Oh. Ooh. It's it's sacrilegious chocolate. <gasps> the three tiers of cacao trees on each side of the grove extend to the opposite end hundreds of yards away. We have to save chocolate. We can't let it die. No, we, we cannot let it die. That's a real possibility, though. I mean, if, like, there's some type of blight that's slowly killing the chocolate trees. I'm like, I don't want to live in a world without chocolate. No. You lick one of the pods. It tastes like nothing and feels like licking onion skin. Mm. But we're going to take it. You and Josie crush the husk with your feet until you have a sizable pile of beans. The magical fruit? So we can, um, very slowly here. Using the beer, yeah. bar tab thingy. I don't know what those are called. <laughs> oh, we're so demanding you should 20 or 30 local lose their lives in an effort to bring us first blend of beans. World's greatest to see here. Ah, the beans are scooped from the pods, washed, and then roasted. Each bean is cracked to reveal its nib, the stuff of the chocolate's made. Once more, boy, there's a lot we have to do. Okay. Shoot me. <laughs> is that part of the game? Yes, killing me. <laughs> I won! I'm dead. Let's see here. What is that noise in the background? It's like, womp, is that a frog? womp. Womp, womp. Or your mom. Goops. No, there'd be a lot more nagging and anger. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, how... Ooh, descend. Do we need water? Uh-oh. We need rope. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm a man. Let's go. Well. Did I just die? After such a fall as this, I shall think nothing of tumbling. I want you to sit down for oh, a while. Oh, well, I guess we should have died. <laughs> Try to, all I want to do is one of the things that's hard to figure out how to go backwards. Like, you know, where we need to go. Okay. I figured it out. Yay! Bushy little tree? Or is the tree like little bush? I was wondering if the... Did it say gnaw? Yeah, yeah, that was where I gnawed all the sugar cane earlier. <laughs> That takes you back to, yeah, not where I wanted to go. Yeah, I think if you just go straight and go straight again. Yeah, there we go. Let's fly. I believe you can fly. Like fly, like fly. There are parrots around here. Wait. Do you need your tire ironed? I have a crowbar, I think. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Let's slowly move our inventory. One section. At least I thought I had a crowbar. You have that tire iron. I don't know if that would work. Cacao. I don't. Yep, there we go. You jam the flat end of the tire iron under the crate's lid and bear down on it. With a squeal of complaint, the nails push out and the lid opens. 
Pulling it off the rest of the way, you discover that the crate is full of electronic gear. Mm. Ooh, we need that. That's actually what we needed. Coax cables? Like for cable? Yeah. Okay. Probably so we can go down the well. Use the cable as something to... Yeah. Hey, dude! Well, maybe we're running out of that out here. Hey, we could be. This did come out in like 96, 97. Dial up. What? Beep, <laughs> beep! Doesn't, doesn't work. Instant messenger that you couldn't turn off, and everyone would just bing, 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 bing. I wasn't that liked. But look, if you get closer, I'd be it goes to do quicker. homework on there, like researching things, and then you'd get like 500 instant messages, and I'm like, I'm busy. They eventually had a busy thing where you could turn it off. But... Yeah, eventually they did. So, remember the what we saw here? Yeah. This. One wall of the temple's anteroom features an elaborate carving. Looks like cool. Oh, eyeballs. Put the stones in the eye sockets. As the last stone clicks home, a, remar a remarkable system of counterweights and pulleys triggers a hidden lock, allowing the top and bottom portions of the mural to separate. Oh, good. That last room was a little gloomy. Yes, definitely cheerier <laughs> in here. What's that smell? Not sure. Something's burnt. Dead bodies. Ooh, bellows. A couple of pieces of wood connected by a moldering piece of animal skin lies in the corner. Me. You take the wooden hide construction. I think it's a bellows for the fire. At least it used to be. Let's make some chocolate. Chocolate. We got some hot chocolate. <laughs> Hot, hot, hey, hot, we hot got chocolate. it. <laughs> never, ever let it cool. Tom Hanks, you look really weird. My hands are going weird. <laughs> Tripod stands over the fire pit. Its smooth, heavy wooden legs connected through carefully drilled holes in the skull. <laughs> of course it had to be in a skull. Yay. Let's see here, there's our... They're really into chocolate, which makes me think they must have been pretty damn civilized. But they're also into this skull motif. Well, this smacks of Guarani. Actually, this far north, they were the Tupinamba. Cannibal. I got a cauldron. So you couldn't pick up the urn, but you could pick up a cauldron. Yes. Fire pit. Uh... Oh, we're literally facing. Yeah, the wall at the other side, which is weird. Ooh, let's go. Let's turn back around. Whee! There it is. And it's like tank controls in Resident Evil 2. We're just going in a circle. <laughs> so what we needed to do, we need the... There we go. Those are all slip knots. Slip knots. <laughs> <laughs> you yank on the cable to prove the strength of your knots. On your third and hardest yank, the cauldron slips out of the knots and clatters to the floor, making a horrendous racket that hurts your ears. Josie grabs a cable from you and deftly weaves a pattern of small, tight knots that hog ties the cauldron perfectly and hands it back to you. Oh, yeah, well, if I wanted to show off... This game's banter is like what makes it. That's what you get for mansplaining knots. <laughs> Really, it, their relationship is what I enjoy about this game. It reminds me of the old Indiana Jones. Or yeah, the like good, romancing the romancing st the stones. Uh, yeah. You lower the pot of the stone well. When you put it back out, pull it back out. You find a cauldron full of water. All right, we scored water. Score, Jake. Look, reach for the sky. Reach for the sky. I say to you, I am warming you. There's a reach snake in my boot. Blood on your hands. Blood Do on your hands. Blood on Do your not dick. Try my patience for a longer time. Right. And you don't even know where it came from. <laughs> you reach for the sky. We meet again. Turn sometimes around. it pays to be an animal. Sometimes don't. Take the map out of his pants and talk Don't take to things me. out of my pants. You feel Josie pull out. Hey, oh, time cop. And the walkie talkie. Wait, the walkie talkie is lifted from your hip. Every hero becomes a boar. 
Ralph Waldo <laughs> Emerson. Turn around again slowly. Yeah, well up yours too, buddy. David Mamet. <laughs> Stop suppressing a laugh. You are in big or hot to trouble the bottled water. I am going to get the authorities. Mr. Kiskolon, he is going to be very upset. Very upset. Fine. You go tell Mr. Kiskolon that we are very upset with him. We are very angry at him. So you go get him right now and bring him here right away. And bring the authorities with you. Okay. Don't go away. I'll be back as soon as I can. Guzman walks backwards towards the entrance, trying to keep you in aim as he does so. He trips, stands up, dusts himself off. It's okay. I didn't hurt myself. Finally, he squeezes under the tree and's gone. You and Josie look at each other, but you're not sure what to say, so you both shrug. <laughs> you're like, what was the point of that? Every last bean is scooped into the cauldron. Your beans now look amazingly clean. Where did our beans go? In the cauldron? You hold the beans back with one hand as you pour water out of the pot. Good, we've done that. Now we gotta cook them. Sometimes it pays to be an animal, sometimes don't. <laughs> sometimes it pays to spin around in circles. You might throw up, but then again you might not. Sometimes you do feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> you might find blood on your dick. <laughs> and, and you don't even know, know where it came so. from. Okay, so did I do that, or was I too busy? <laughs> we gotta replay... What, wait, what? Put the fire pit on the floor. Wait. Why are we... I don't think you've done something with the fire pit that we have to do. Jake, that's hundreds of years old. It's in good shape. You might not be able to put it together again. It's simple. Look, three holes. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. It's a national Belongs treasure. Belongs in a museum. I'm not going to hurt it. <laughs> it could be worth a tremendous amount of money. Well, maybe we shouldn't mess with it. <laughs> oh. Money always well, no, there's fire under that. I was thinking you had to move it. You have to clean oh up my the ashes. gosh. Take the ashes. N no, not in the ashes. The following conversations had all of its sparkling wit and flippant commentary removed and replaced with artless exposition and overly obvious hints so that you can see what you'd be getting with a cheaper, lower quality computer adventure game. <laughs> oh, great. You dropped those branches right in the fire pit. Now you've got ashes all over them. They'll be useless. What shall we do with them? I'm sorry. Maybe we should just burn them and forget about them. What, you mean create a fire here in the fire pit? Can we do that? Yes, I think we can. Oh, Jake, I'm so <laughs> glad you're here to they do really this did. for us. Hey, I am the hero. It is what I do. <laughs> I am the hero. That is what I do. <laughs> so how do we set them on fire? Well, we have matches. Light the branches. For no reason. Then we just put the pot on top. Well, we have to re repair the bellows first. You pull out great quantities of the bandage tape, sever them on the pointed end of the dispenser, and wrap the tape around the bellows, paying special attention to sealing up all the holes in the old hide. Is that going to be airtight? Spare me. I'm doing okay. Now that's pride in craftsmanship. Now Ooh. that the oop oh, oh, that was quick. Well, now the bellows is patched, you can use it to pump air to the fire making burner. I did that. Get out of that. You hang the cauldron back on the tripod over the fire pit. The beans begin to exude an aroma. You and Josie take turns stirring them with the bamboo pole to ensure that they roast evenly. Are you sure this isn't coffee? No. <laughs> <laughs> when all the beans appear to be properly collared, no small feet in a room with so little light, Remove them from the fire and let them cool for a while. I didn't say to put it on the floor. Game. Using the nutcracker, you extract chocolate nibs from the roasted beans. Mm, nibs. There's our nibs. <laughs> All the nibs. Her nibs. All the nibs belong to us. Let's see here.
And you don't even know where it came from. What else do we need to make chocolate? What were the marble slabs? Okay. Nope. No. <laughs> I didn't know we were making fudge. Oh, we're definitely not. With the marble slab. <laughs> you wouldn't know anything about making fudge. No, I wouldn't. Because you don't even know where it came from. Okay. We have to get the uh, the pressure. So we remove the eyes? Yeah. And then... There we go. Okay. You scrape the paste off the slab into the pot, trying hard to lose as little as possible. It's starting to look like what we would expect it to be. Okay. There we go. Hey, smell that? God, that's incredible. Here, we have to conk them. A mere bag of shells. You keep stirring, and I'll use the bell. This is a fun cool game. The of the chocolate. Yes, yes, sir. This is Ghirardelli, sir. <laughs> After a quarter of an hour of conching, when the aroma of sweet melted chocolate could not be any more heady, you remove the pot from the fire. I would have used a double boiler. <laughs> You pour the liquid chocolate into the small box. Then, working the bellows, you blow cool air into the liquid chocolate, thus causing the chocolate to set, or harden. Okay. There we go. You gently remove a finished chocolate bar from the molding. But it doesn't have any sugar. Yeah, it did. I put sugar in it. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then it's gonna be muy delicioso. Yeah, it would be sacrilegious, but we already did that. <gasps> It might be sacrilegious because <laughs> it very well might be. Because <laughs> we're we're in a you know some type of temple. Oh hi. It's Sigmund Kisscolin, president of the faction Castaroga. Greedy despot, single handed destroyer of inestimable natural resources, and to be fair, the guy who paid for it, your tickets, Bucko. Yeah, we did still the same. I don't wanna leave it. You hand the chocolate bar to Kiss Colin. Watch this. It's a chocolate bar. Sort of. Made from the trees in that temple. This could be poison. It is entirely some if you don't believe me. Sigmund breaks off a piece of the chocolate and gives it to you, smiling nastily. Without hesitation, you pop the piece in your mouth. Sigmund raises an eyebrow. The chocolate is unlike anything you've ever tasted. The crudity of the manufacturer has left the texture slightly gritty, but you're virtually unconscious of the flaw. The small, thick chunk of sweet chocolate begins to melt the moment you close your mouth. It dissolves over your tongue. The flavor is intense, with the vaguest suggestion of bitterness, yet with a predominant mellowness that suggests dairy milk chocolate. Oh man, I wish I had some right now. <laughs> Kiss Colin, Josie, Guzman, everyone fades into the background. Every nerve fiber of your body receives <laughs> waves of intoxicated pleasure from the indescribable melee. Oh, it's, it's okay. Oh. Oh. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Are they having orgasms? Uh. Oh. Yes, they are, Adam. I think I think you just climaxed. That might be the best thing by chocolate. <laughs> okay, tasty break. Hello. This is is this chocolate? That's exactly what it is, and it grows only one place on Earth. And you're about to blow it up and cut it down. <laughs> Shut up. Josie makes an appeal to Kiss Colin to spare the trees. Something about the chocolate makes him a suddenly easy sell. Not only does he promise not to cut down the trees, but he then vows to cultivate them and sell the pods to the highest bidder. Of course he does. Next thing you know, Josie shakes you. 
We can go back now. He's okay. We got it. We did it, Jake. Yeah, okay. Good. Are you all right? I'm good. Can we take some of that chocolate? It, it gives me an erection. I'm way ahead of you. Made a bar for Oh, it's like, how long oh, were we in that? Over there. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Waves of <laughs> orgasms. Slow, like seven hours we were in that. <laughs> I want some of that chocolate. Editor's note. What follows is a rather gushy scene in which Josie extols your virtues to the high heavens. We'll spare you the embarrassing details because we know how shy you are. To everybody else in the bar, you've only been gone ten minutes. But of course, you and Josie know better. Then Josie pops out for a moment. In the meantime, you recount your adventures to the rapt audience at the bar, ending with the fact that you're not sure the chocolate you returned with should be legal. <laughs> it's that addicting. You also describe the Temple of Eurekin. Doc points out the reason for the similarity with a horrendous pun about what's man is your what's Mayan is urine. We'll skip that. Okay. <laughs> Josie pops back in the bar, more ecstatic than ever, because she says we've done it. She tells you that facts and chocolate is alive and well in the future, and the government had to make a controlled substance. Make it a controlled <laughs> substance. Guess Cohen keeps his word up to a point. As she explains, he died in about another 10 years, weighing in at over 1,100 pounds. Just eating all the chocolate. They couldn't get him to a cemetery. They just cut a few strategic slits in the frame of his house, let his body fall down to the basement, and buried him there. <gasps> you feel great for having helped Josie, but of course you work, your work for tonight is far from done. All right. Well, that happened. It did. And in the next episode, we'll I come back... Know. How we could top saving chocolate. <laughs> I don't know, but we're going to find out in the next episode. We'll see you then. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Okay, now that was a blast.